What is up after a month? Great to see you guys. Great to see you guys. I'm so happy, man. I get so excited. Like the week leading up to this is like, like, oh, I can't wait for Saturday to see everybody. So it's good to see you guys. We have a couple awesome guests today, both returns. So you know what our opinion is if they're returns. We think these guys are awesome, which is why we brought them in or asked them to come back and they were kind enough to say yes. So today's technique is backbreaker. All right. So we figured let's go with like a Kempo staple. Right, let's go with the Kempo staple, a good one that everybody loves, and let's just break it apart and see what everybody's gonna do. So let's jump right into it up first from the undisclosed location in Los Angeles. Along with AJ as usual, it is Angelo. All right, guys, welcome. How's everybody doing? Uh, we're out here in LA, it's a nice day, there's no fires, everything's looking good. Um, today, what we're gonna be doing is backbreaker. Uh, back is probably one of my favorite techniques that I love. It's the, like, like Dan said, it's like the staple of one of the techniques that we all like. I love it. It's in form five. I just love the flow of it. Um, so what I'm going to do right real quick is I'm going to show you the way that I learned it. And then I'm going to show you some of the adjustments that I made simply because of the height differential between myself and some of the opponents that we would have. Okay. So backbreaker. As it comes, the punch comes in from this position. I learned it from a lot of different stances. I learned it from here. I learned it with my right forward and I learned it with my left forward. So I'm just going to take it from a fighting position here. As it comes in, we have Perry Perry coming through, grabbing on here. I'm going to jump and I like to go to the coccyx bone, breaking the, the tailbone. Boom. And then I come back and I land him really nice right there. From here, I'll shoot that hand in. I will rip the neck, pop this from here. Drop him and hit right down to the floor, okay? So that's pretty much the basic that we all know. Um, now, you okay? Come here, Matt. <laughs> uh, we were working out earlier. This is another one of our guys, Matt. He's a boxer guy. So I'm going to use him just to show the height differential. They're here. We just finished working out, so I'm going to utilize them. If you notice this in the ideal phase, when I come in and I'm somebody my exact height, I can do all kinds of stuff to him, and I'm very comfortable here with no problem. There's no weight problem at all. Okay, AJ? So when I have somebody who's taller, and I'm gonna get down in my stance. I'll be a little, a little taller bit. here. Okay, so from this position, you can see what happens. If it was somebody like Larry Kangaika or Dennis Poser, I have a hard time with this grip here, and, and the leverage is not gonna be exactly there, okay? So I'm gonna have to really lift up high. And the big part for someone being small is you've got to be careful. If I bring 200 pounds down on my knee, I better have a solid bow stance. I got to make sure that that foot is turned properly. Go ahead and stand up. Because if I get hit wrong and I bring that through, I could definitely lose my front knee very easily on this technique. So a big giant guy coming down on my knee is going to be tough. So sometimes you just bypass that knee completely. So if your foot is actually straight, you have more support but you have no lateral stability whatsoever. So when you do that stance, you want to make sure that you get that knee nice and solid so when you're resting all that body weight. So that's one of the hassles that I have with this technique being short. The second one I have, turn around, come down, is, although some of you guys learned the technique where you reach on the inside of the neck, some of the people do it on the outside. I prefer to go to the outside simply because I can't reach around, and if somebody is big, it's very difficult for me to reach this side of the chin and spin. So I like to go right here, turn, and then I'll go right back to the bridge of the nose, okay? So those are the basics of that technique. Now, if you're small, this is what um, uh, I like to do because I've modified it, and I'm going to show you some of the tricks that I do. Uh, Mark Lawler, you're going to, and anybody else who's uh, studied Tracy system, there is a technique called monkey's elbow. And what it is... Monkey elbow is a technique when someone grabs you, you come here, you do a monkey hand, and you go to the heel palm, okay? It's a great technique. So what I've incorporated with that is a similar type of a thing. When the guy comes in, I'm going to come up here, but I'm going to pull down, and then I'm going to pop his head back, okay? From here, if you can see, we're going to put that person in a cervical extension, okay? Uh, we're going to use a cervical push-down extension on this. So I'm going to come in from here, pop his head back. So from here, all I do is I grab his head and I hold on to his forehead, okay, in a cervical compression. What that does is it compresses the cervical spine, and when I actually put pressure, the knees automatically give out. There's a lot of neurological stuff happening in here. Steve Stewart, you understand this tremendously. 
from this position, okay? Mr. Mike Pick calls the jam down. He has some really awesome stuff using the neck. But from here, if this was Larry, I could still hang and hang like hanging on a big tree and drop him. But what you're not going to do anymore is you're not going to use the knee because he's just a big guy. So what I'm showing you right now is how to use this technique, sort of backbreaker, against a giant guy. So you grab from here. Now from here, you're just going to just hang and pull him straight down to the floor. And he goes down. And from here, we continue with whatever you want to do in the technique. Okay? One more time. So he's standing here. He's working. He's going to come at me. One, two. And I'm going to pop him in the head. From here, reach up and grab. From here, drop him and follow up with the technique. Okay? Now, if the guy is really tall, this will work. Because what you do is you do a jump instead. You'll come in here, one, two, and stand up really tall. If he's really tall, I can actually hit his head back and then jump and pull him down with the same amount of force, okay? So I'm using my entire body weight. So I love this technique. He can be done, let me switch out for a little guy. Back, come in here. If you got somebody who's your ideal phase, this way, if the punch is coming in, he's here, and if I do, just like we learned the technique, if I do this on him, it works just as easy, and he's a lot easier to throw around. So you can go ahead. Up. You can use this on a shorter opponent, or you can use it on a tall opponent. But for somebody who's my height, ideally, we're going to come in through here from this position. Step, step, target. Sometimes you can change the target up and use the back of the leg and get the same result. Or sometimes you can use the coccyx bone, and that's the one that I prefer going right up in there. And then dropping them on this position here, breaking the neck, pow, and then drop. So my version is pretty much the same as everybody else's version, only I had to do some modifications because of the height difference of the person who's attacking me. So that's the only changes that I made when I train personally. I teach the technique exactly how it's taught because I like it. It's in Form 5, and it's a great technique. But uh, a couple little secrets for those of you. Again, you can also use... One more thing for being short, if you're doing the, the, the technique, you can actually come in with a little punch here, and what that does is it kind of softens him a little bit and it brings his height down. So come in tall, I'm gonna go pow, and then I can go in and reach for the continued technique that we wanna use. So either one of those, the whole key here is to bring their height zone down to your height zone and still you maintain your stability so that you have proper mechanics to work. If you're short and you start doing everything up here, you're very vulnerable to a lot of attack from the other person. Yeah. Cool. So that's kind of like my take on um, Backbreaker. I hope you guys pulled something out of it. Give it a shot. And uh, back to you, Dan. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I love that Angelo said the key is to bring the guy down to your height. But then it turns out Angelo has a 43 inch vertical and put himself up to his height too. <laughs> Excellent gentlemen. All right, moving up next over to Spain is Lorenzo. Now, if you guys have been watching regularly, now, you understand that this guy ties himself, ties his techniques into his forms all the time. Every time I watch this guy, so, so I, I don't even know what he's gonna say, but I bet he's gonna tie something to the form. I certainly hope I'm right. <laughs> But check it out, because it's always sweet. Lorenzo! Hello, hello everybody, hello. The first thing that I want to, uh, to tell you is that I hope that all people are okay with the, uh, all people, all family are okay with the virus, okay? So I hope that all people is correctly and that we don't have any problem, okay? So I start, uh, this time, uh, he's one of my, a student that he helped me to do the thing, okay? So I want to start. As Angelo tell us, if you start with this or this, I prefer to start with the right side, okay? Yes? So when, when we are working, we need to think to attack correctly because if not, you need to change some move with the feet. And uh, we need to check this, attack command. When he hit here, if he don't have the correct uh, depth of the attack, if I do this, I need to do another step and another step, okay? But if he attacked correctly, attack again, I am behind him. I need to do this only, okay? So, remember, 
as I like to go to the phone to take the basics. You know this, uh, this move in the phone, then you come back. But this is where we learn to control the circle. Remember, if I am doing a circle, I need to use the tools to control the power, okay? So I think that all people know this, when I am go in circle, to control is to go straight and with the back and mass. So in this move, when he attack me, now I need to turn, I need to step, step straight, okay? And I need to go with Mary of gravity, okay? I need to do this thing in this way, put in this way. So I am doing this, keep talking. I am doing one straight, straight, and then you go down, okay? So if you want to prefer the technique that Angelo did, you grab and you go down. It's the same move, okay? Another time more, he attack. I do this. It's inward parry, outward parry. You can get the relationship with the technique, okay? It's very important, the angle of desviation and angle of deflection. Because if I do this, if he go, is uh, I cannot grab. So I need maybe to change the technique. Okay, so we need to think in to attack correctly to have the correct move or the attack. Okay, so another time more. When I'm doing this, I am doing this. Okay, now I am doing a uh, uh, a time of compounding. Okay, you can see this. You can learn this in long two. Okay. If you want, in long two, you have kneeling, trending, and tracking. Now, when I am doing this, this is the controlling move to control his shoulder. Okay? Now, I grab in two times double, uh, double uh, move. One, in, and two. Okay? He attack another time. I put in this way. Attack I'm doing this. Now, it's not only grab, it's to marry of gravity. <coughs> now, you are head here, okay? And now it's very important to analysis and auto ten of the, this technique, okay? This is the body momentum, okay? The body momentum in this move, you go in this way, then you change and you go in this way, okay? So when you are doing this, this body momentum, we break in three parts, okay? One part is, one part is when I grab a pull, another part is when my knee go to hit, and the last one is when he go to my knee. Remember the last weekend that we did, we do, we did the session, we studied Damning, damning mace, I think is the number, okay? When you are hitting something, this is the body, I go to hit, or I take his body to the punch, or to my arm, or to, to me, or I take his or her to something around the bironi. The other technique, we are doing this. One, two, I push, I push to the Imperonama, okay? Now I am learning to prepare his body to hit. I, hit, I take his body and he go in me, okay? Another time. Now I pull to my knee. This is the other part of the three types of three forms to hit, okay? I can go to him. I can take to hit or I go to hit with me, okay? So, when I turn, okay, I need to have a angle of incidence, okay? So, it's better to pull down, as Angelo tell us, to have a good angle, okay? Remember to put the knee, the feet, in this way. 
Because if you put the feet in this way, maybe you have take something with the feet and your knee is so high. Now you can go more. If you are doing this, my knee go down. If I put this, my knee has more depth when I am hitting, okay? So I hit, and now very important, when I pull, I need to put correctly because I need to help and to use Mary of gravity, okay? This is very important to have a correct align, accelerate move, I increase the effect of the gravity. Another time more. One. Now, I need to control. I hit me. I need to control. Okay? Now, Angelo, I do the same thing. I do the same thing. I here, I break. Another time of the of the this technique is how to break. Check this. You learn to break the neck when you are in vertical plane, leaping plane. Okay. You hit. Now you learn to break when the body is in vertical. Then you learn to break the neck when your body is in horizontal place. He go down, now I hit, now I am learning to break when the body is in horizontal. Now here is diagonal. It's not, it's, um, it's not the same maneuver because if I do in horizontal plane, he turn, he can't hit me. Now you need to do in different way, diagonal move. To the knee, to the knee. Now, this is another term, sandwich. I learn all the time to do the sandwich, but not the sandwich with my knee and I break double back knuckle to the club, okay? And I push down with the club. Somebody do this, I like to do this, this move, bang, okay? That's well, huh? okay? Another term that you need to think, this is another type to hit. The term in Kempo is pivot kick because I pivot with my feet, I hit with my head, okay? Now I go to go run. I is the cleric that you break, okay? Okay? So you have different things, different terms to study in the technique. And then you can play with the family group or complete category, okay? You have dashing the stone, escape the stone, kneel of convulsion, or maybe you have, uh, um, I don't remember the name. Lipo uh, uh, Lipo <laughs> okay. okay, so you can play with the system, but for me it's very important to know how to, to, how to control your body. And this is a good technique, to learn to control your body when you are turning. <clears throat> okay, now, <clears throat> okay. And for me, this is, this is all, okay, boss, is the tune of the next song. And oh, it's out. sorry, I thought you were saying goodbye already. I flipped it over to me. <laughs> 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 thank you very much, Lorenzo. Very thorough, nonetheless. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. So that was much. awesome yeah. as always. And I like the long two correlation there. That was beautiful. <laughs> Excellent. All yeah. right, so moving right along, sending it down to Kenneth Square, one of my favorite people on earth, Mr. Mark Lawler. And Yale. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, you guys all know my wife, Gail. Nice to be with you again today. We're talking about backbreaker. Uh, what is backbreaker, really? It's uh, the Kempo way to take somebody's back. Yes, sir. Uh, anybody here to say <laughs> jiu-jitsu? A lot of time is spent on getting around behind somebody so you can take them to the ground, uh, choke them out, whatever it might be. Um, so what I'm going to do is get away from the classical entry with the two parries, and we're going to look at a, a, a couple different ways to do that. 
One is going to be basically with a bob and a weave. And we're going to work with two ranges. Person's right up on top of you. Uh, we're going to bob and weave and come under and take you back that way. We're going to demonstrate that in a second. Um, for a little further range, we're going to borrow from returning storm. Okay. Um, hey, I don't know what the guys want to throw at me. It could be a, a haymaker. It could be a straight punch. So we're going to go back. And uh, principle of sparring, as you guys know, we want to make a miss. So we're going to exploit the miss and then uh, take the back that way. Um, now, um, following up on what uh, Angelo and Lorenzo said, uh, it can be hard to get hold of somebody's shoulders from there, particularly if there's a height differential. Uh, so what we're going to utilize is a shin kick, kicking roundhouse kick with your shin to the inside of the leg to split the person to bring their head down. And at that point, we're going to control, throw the knee to the base of the back, break the back, and, uh, and go on from there. Now, obviously, we have um, kneel of compulsion for that reason, too. You know, if you just want to drive them to the ground, you can do the sidekick in there and just uh, go with that idea. Um, we're going to follow up with the backbreaker, but um, I'm going to teach you guys or show you guys a um, different way to finish it, aside from breaking the neck. Because uh, we're all going to go over how to do that. So I'm basically going to stick the extension of thundering hammers on the end of this here. So first things first, you guys can see this. I'm going to have Gail, oh, excuse me right here, please, uh, demonstrate. Scoot up a little bit here. Okay. I'm close up to her here. We'll go to the right first. Okay. I could be throwing a haymaker. I could be coming straight. She's basically going to do a basic bob weave and pivot, just like we do in boxing. Uh, you guys couldn't see what she just did there. Let's do that again here. I'll play in a second. She's going to come under. Now she's going to take her right leg and blast me with a shit. Okay, uh, that hurts like hell if you've ever been kicked that way. Uh, at that point, uh, she can come in with a knee shot. And she could break my back, which if I fall, I probably won't be able to get back up. So we, uh, we want to do that. Okay, so again, just basic uh, boxing there. Okay, now uh, if we go, you know, if you look from here again, we'll go from the left side. Okay. So if I come left, she's going to come under the other side. Now I'm going to have her do a basically a quick switch. All right, let's do it again. Sam. It doesn't really matter. You can step with either foot. The idea you're getting behind it, right? Okay, so she's going to come under. Now she's going to quick switch and throw the round kick from there. Just ah, that's all right. <laughs> this is our relationship, people. Okay, so um, you get the idea. Bob and weave underneath. Now I'm going to demonstrate. Gail is going to be kind enough to throw me at a uh, roundhouse or straight right, and basically I'm going. Boom, 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 returning storm. Same shin kick, okay? All right, I'm going to throw the knee to the base of the back and come back and break the back. Now, what I'm going to do, let me turn this over here. What I'm going to do a little different is I'm going to come over with a clothesline. I can hit with a hammer. Uh, I can strike with the forearm. And keep this upright yourself. Okay. And then we're going to do this one. Like that, we're going to shoot the knee and the clothes. Now you can't you can fall. Okay, so from here, I'm going to just basically bang like that. And she's going to watch it. And then the uh, follow up can be uh, whatever you want. You can do the classical ending, the backbreaker with the pivot kick to the side of the temple. Um, again, I like I like this shooting up to the neck and pinching this off with the knee. It's pretty nasty. And as the saying goes, the ground gets harder than you or I. So we're, we're letting them fall on the ground, do the work for us here. And uh, you could do that off the other side too, substitute the quick switch kick. Uh, but again, we're just doing, we're going, hey, what's coming at me? Make them miss and then take them back. Okay. Um, that's basically the ideas I had there. Um, so good. I'm going to throw it back over to Dan. Looking forward to see what everybody else has today.
Back to you guys. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, the loving and violent Lawler family. <laughs> Spectacular, everybody. Spectacular. All right. Rolling right along. We're going to just jump right into it. My man, Sabora Champ. Hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well. So far, so good with uh, Mr. Lawler and uh, uh, Lorenzo and um, Angelo. So, my take on uh, Backbreaker is that, number one, I love the technique. I think it's an excellent technique. The problem is, because of my uh, vertical challenge, I mean, if I was to try to take somebody down like, you know, Mark Lawler or... Uh, uh, Larry or anybody above nine feet, right? Because I'm like six two. So, <laughs> so when you know when they're in motion with their punch, it's gonna be very hard for me to uh, to reach up um, and grab. However, if I happen to be lucky enough to be attacked by the uh, ideal size opponent, which is about my size, okay, and um, uh, we'll make this work. Okay, so the technique calls for a right punch to your right uh, temple from your right front flank, right? So we move in, we do a double parry, and we try to grab right here, okay? And I agree with um, Lorenzo that you want to slam down that grip super tight so that you're not just reaching in and grab. You want to slam down and grab. Uh, what, if he has a jacket on, grab that jacket really nice and tight. If he doesn't, you're going to grab onto the skin, okay? So if you grab the uh, shoulder, uh, skin on the shoulder, that's gonna create that uh, uh, back bend uh, motion already. All right, so in this technique, there are two pull downs. As soon as you grab the shoulder, you wanna pull down right there, okay? That breaks his base, which force him or prevent him from being able to move or to counterattack like with a back kick or something like that. So you wanna keep him off of his base Shoot the knee to any target that's available, whether it is the butt, bone, spine, lower back, whatever, it doesn't matter. Slam him back down. Okay? So that's the second pull down as you pull him down here. Now, once again, make sure you are in a proper stance. Okay? Your knee has to be out. Your uh, uh, shin has to be straight up and down. If you do this and the guy lands on your leg, you're going out. So you want to be here. And this acts as a second weapon also. As you slam down, this knee is going to run right into his spine once again. All right? So as far as the hand motion go, as soon as I slam him down right here, where I do a double hammer, that is going to go right into the temple. Pow, like that. And immediately I'm going to switch my hand. So my left hand, brace the back of the head, my uh, right hand is going to reach under the uh, chin, okay, and or uh, over the eyes and just rip that way, okay? Coming back down with the chop, double hook right here. If his eyes are still there, you can hook the eyes, back knuckle, and then I do a double claw right above his face. So what I'm doing here is momentarily bl further blinding him as I step back. I flip him, so I trip, slam him into the ground so that his head hopefully hits the pavement and bounce back up. And then as you uh, go and finish him off with that heel stump into uh, the collarbone. So that's the Disneyland version, hope, hoping that everything works, okay? So for me, as a, a fail backup uh, plan, so if I go here and I'm unable to grab him, Okay, if my right leg is forward like this, you can go into similar movement of um, Dance of Darkness, right? You can also go into Leaping Crane if you are uh, unable to grab them, or if you happen to step all the way back already doing the uh, backbreaker footwork, you then have Kneel of Compulsion as your backup. You know, so, and that's the technique that is already taught as the backup to uh, fail attempt uh, backbreaker. Um, so, you know, so that's something to, to think about. Um, another thing I like to do is uh, compare it with, uh, you know, uh, crashing wings. So we have 
all of the techniques, this is the, the 24 technique based on the 24 listing, right? So you have crashing wings, you have flight to freedom, uh, you have circling the horizon and, uh, and backbreaker. Those uh, few right there are the last technique on, on a 24 list. So you have crashing wing where the opponent is behind us, all right? We stepped out and we do a double um, elbow. So both of your arm coming down. In backbreaker, both of your arms going up, all right? So we grab and pull. So from here, I get back and I shoot my elbow, okay? So this is a uh, high uh, mid-range weapon or short-range weapon with the arm. And then with backbreaker, you got the knee to the back. So it's the opposite. One is an elbow and one is the, uh, uh, the knee. You have crashing wings, we finish them off with the uh, hammer fist, and then backbreaker, you have double hammer fist uh, this way, right? We have the heel palm as a follow-up for crashing wings, okay? And then he supposedly uh, fall down, and we follow up with the knee. There goes again, example of backbreaker. One, you are kneeing the guy in the spine while you're directly behind him, this time, he is facing you, okay, and uh, you're facing him, and you still need him from the side, catching him uh, to the back. Maybe not completely to the spine, but more or less uh, floating ribs area, okay? And then at the end of that, you have the same stomp cover out, uh, sweeping kick, and this time left rear uh, stomp to the, the collarbone. So there's some relationship there that you guys can uh, dig further and, um, and, and look at it, okay? So one uh, technique, we have the opponent, the opponent in front of us facing away, okay? And we take him down uh, where we take him down, okay? And then crashing wings, we are face-to-face -face pretty much, and we take him down uh, uh, face up as well, okay? So anyway, there's my backbreaker. Thank you, and uh, back to you, Dan. All right, my man, thank you very much. Excellent, as always, rolling right along. We're gonna send it down to Florida. The most energized guy I know. Always smile when I see him, Monte. Thank you, sir, it's a great honor to be with uh, the Brotherhood, and it's a great honor to have such uh, high caliber uh, guests. Uh, unbelievable. We're so, we're so lucky to have you guys come in and again with us. I want to thank everybody in the front line for all the hard work they do and risking their lives for us. Now, the technique calls in for an attack from 2.33 o'clock, and as we're stepping in uh, as an ideal phase, so we're checking in. We're continuing the motion. I try to track this hand all the way to the eyes. As I position my hand right on the traps, I grab the skin. I definitely sink the, my fingers right into the traps. And I use my gravitational marriage to take him down. Now, once he falls, stop falling down, I bounce right from there into the knee strike and let him rest. Okay? He rests right on my butcher block. So from there, I do a palm right on the temple right there and a, a palm right into the bottom jaw. This is devastating. I've felt it many times and it's very, it doesn't feel good. I stretch and set up the strike right on the bridge of the nose. Okay. From there, I do the eye gouge and I surprise him. And I, <laughs> the reason I, I stopped, I'll uh, explain. And, and I surprise him with the back knuckles right in the collarbone. But I take the ground from underneath him as the same time I strike. Bam! He falls down and he bounces up. So that's when you do the, the claws as he bounces up. And the knee falls up right after that. And then you can continue with that technique to finish the extension. Now the points that it's, sometimes when you do an exercise uh, and, the, and the technique, things you see, you notice. A lot of times they come in with a little bit of thrust as you're coming in. With this, sometimes you have to do a fist to do a block from his body from coming forward. So as you do, you do the fist, and then you continue with the technique, and you finish it. 
Uh, another thing that I notice as you're doing this, you notice what happened is your push comes in too strong on his body and you're gonna see this on him. So once he bends down, okay, his body's bending down, that's when you hammer right on his kidney, drop him up and go to the face, technique that we all know, all right? And then from there you can continue into your back breaker, okay? Um, I like uh, sometimes uh, as you roll and I fuse my body with his body, I don't separate my body away from him. I separate my body from him right at the right moment to take advantage of my gravitational marriage. So as I stick in, I'm very close to him the whole entire time. Now notice he is, I make sure that I land at 90 degrees. He is actually in a horse stance behind me. So he is at the weakest point behind me. So as I roll on him, okay, sometimes if he pins down a little bit, I hit him right there with the tailbone, boo, to tenderize him, to bring him up, to fall down better for me, okay, to continue the technique. So that's a very nice point if you try it. So as you roll up, he bends down, wah, he raises up, and then you take advantage of your gravitational marriage, he lands, and then you can continue with the technique uh, on that one. Another point. Uh, well, I think that <laughs> I covered everything very fast. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, we'll go one more time on that. So as, as we roll, oh, one more thing. So listen, we mentioned a guy is very tall, heavy, lots of muscles, and you grab the traps and the traps can, like, <laughs> like Mr. Lowler, you're not gonna be able to do nothing with that. So what I do is I sink the two, these fingers right into the throat, and I anchor, I anchor this right on his shoulder. So into the throat, because I'm not gonna grab the face. Face is slippery and all that. I go into the throat and then hang, okay, off there. And now he has no other alternative but to crash down, okay? And then I can continue with the technique. That's a very effective point. Anytime you come in, we hang the guy and grab the throat and, or it's right there. You just concentrate on this. He cannot breathe. And it's a very soft tissue and target. So he'll, he'll fall down right on your butcher block. And then you can do whatever you want with him. Okay. Thank you so much. It's a great honor for me to be uh, with you guys. And I hope to see you guys and get your bruises. <laughs> it's been a long time. I miss you guys. So salute to God. Thank you, Monty. Yes, how funny it is to say that we all miss hitting each other, right? Man, I really miss hitting you, and I miss you hitting me too. All right. Speaking of a guy that likes to hit like that segue, let's start right over to Bradford, Bradford, PA, and Mr. Michael Miller. Hello, everybody. Okay. So, uh, backbreaker. All right. Obviously, I'm going to just make a few points. Everybody's touched based on a lot of stuff. But anyway, let me just run through it real quick. Coming from that right flank, double parry. I like to insert a hook here. So like when I go behind him, I like to hook the eye real quick. As we grab, we do the knee, we pull him in obviously, we grab, we do the, the break, we chop, claw, I, I do two claws up, back knuckles down, stepping back, um, uh, double, double claws that way. Okay, we we all know the basic. Uh, there might there's different versions. We know that. Who cares? Listen, as long as you understand what version you've learned in the ideal phase, we know that the ideal phase is just a fixed phase. It gives us, you know, a problem and it gives us a solution. It doesn't mean it's the solution. All right, it's a starting point. All right, once we get our starting point, we mess around, we play around, we have fun, right? Uh, as long as you're within the principles and concepts, it makes sense. So let's look at that uh, double parry. That's all over the place, inward, outward, inward, outward. You got both sides here, which makes a figure eight, as we know. That's all over the place. Um, if you look at this double parry that we're doing right now, and we're stepping with our left leg, or I'm sorry, our right leg, obviously we know that uh, when you look at the way that, the way that I teach anyway, the way that I teach, um, shield and mace is the top of a double parry. We know the form version is a 
we call it the joust version, where you kind of go in like this. Um, I teach I teach it that uh, for for shield and mace, it's a double parry like this, and then this turns into a vertical outward. Technically, it's a check, but vertical outward block into the punch and so on and so forth. Okay, but in this case, it's it's like okay, I'm stepping with the other leg now, but then I go behind him, and like I said, I like to insert that hook. Okay. Um, we all know that kneel of compulsion is very similar to this, and, and if, in my opinion, it's the what if. You know, what if I grab him and I slip? Well, then we can go into basically uh, leaping crane without the back knuckle. We know that. That's pretty simple. Um, but in this case, uh, and, and on, on uh, kneel of compulsion, the way I was taught is we insert that little hyperextension to the elbow, and I, we go around rather than the insert of the hook. I hook, which means you could do either one with, with either technique. We know that. Okay. So anyway, um, so what you got to look at is, you know, tempo being a uh, motion based system, um, the analytical study of motion based on science, you know, basically it's like our lower body can only do so much and our over our, our upper body can only do so much. And then we show you variations of that. Like for instance, calming the storm says step in like this. And defying, or I'm sorry, uh, securing the storm says, keep your upstairs the exact same way, just switch you downstairs, you know? And, and, uh, and that's kind of like what you're looking at here. I can do this, I can do this, and we do that all over the place. We're, we should already know that by now. And please excuse the sun, but that's, hopefully you can still see me better, or see me well. Um, okay, and then um, my thing, just like what Angelo said, Rather than grabbing the shoulders, okay, now we're going to talk about outside the ideal face. Rather than grabbing the shoulders, I like to grab the head as well. You can go, you can go right inside the eyeballs if you want. When you, when you reach behind, grab their eyes, you could do that. You can grab the top of the forehead and bring it back. You could also grab right in their throat, uh, right like, like this, basically, from behind. Just make sure your elbows are anchored. Always anchor your elbows. Which brings me to the next point. When you're at the point where you grab them, I'm not a fan of my arms being extended on the, on the initial grab. Okay, because now I got to like really muscle him in. I prefer, if I can, to get close enough that my initial grab is like this, where my arms are already anchored. That makes it a lot easier. So now I'm not going from here to here. I'm going from here to here. So I like that a lot better myself. Um, but in the ideal phase, what it is is you go from elbows to wrists, if you do it correctly. So when you grab, when you, when you do your knee, your elbows come to your hip area or, or uh, to your rib area, and then your wrists come there. Okay, because a lot of people, they'll do the knee and they don't move their elbows until afterwards. You want to, you want to, if your arms are a little extended, you want to, Bring your elbows in first, then bring them down before you do everything else, okay? The other thing I like, I want to explain here, other than the back knuckles, nothing wrong with those. Uh, what I've done for my personal self, in probably 95% of the cases, anytime we do a back knuckle, I have altered it to a hammer because I like that a lot better for several reasons. I don't have time to explain that right now, but I like that a lot better for several reasons, okay? Um, so rather than this, I prefer this. With that being said, when we, we get them here and we do all this stuff and we come up, I like to hammer on the clavicles instead of back knuckle on the clavicles. Keep in mind, they are both good. Nothing wrong with the back knuckles, trust me. But the other thing to bring out is timing. I don't know if you guys noticed, but uh, a lot of people in Kimbo are obsessed with speed. You know, um, it's been said that there's a lot of hummingbirds in Kempo. So all they want to do is fla flap their wings really fast and look really cool. What happens, there's a lot of problems with that. Number one, you, 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 you're sacrificing power, number one. Number two, you're sacrificing technique. Uh, and, a lot, and number three, you're not taking an effect. Uh, you're not taking an effect physics. For every action, there's an equal, equal and opposite reaction, and so on and so forth. So. Um, you know, the reality is, if I fly through this technique, oh, blah, 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 and I do all this garbage, um, when I go down like this, 
but like he's probably already on the ground because what what happened was I moved I moved my 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 damn knee before I hit him. Next thing you know, he's on the ground and I missed him because I'm trying to be super fast. So what you want to do is once you get him on your knee and you do all this stuff and you and you claw up, okay, hit him first. It hit him just as you're getting ready to go, and then you, and then you come down. Ultimately, the timing should be your final claws at the end. And I'm talking the uh, base technique. I'm not talking extension. Final claws at the end should be as before his head hit the ground, in my opinion. Or it can be after the head hit the ground and it pops up, maybe because obviously the head's going to bounce up. But in my case, I like to go. I'm going to go really slow. Hammer, just as I'm starting to move, claw. Okay? So that's kind of the way I like to do that as far as that goes. Just understanding timing. Timing is important. Accuracy is important. I'm of the thought process that um, accuracy and timing are more important than speed and power. Because I can be the fastest cat on earth. If, I, if I'm not accurate, I can't hit my target, I'm screwed. Okay? Um, I can be the, the most powerful person on earth. If I can't hit my target, I'm screwed. All right? So I have to have accuracy. I have to have timing. Speed and power, absolutely. We want speed and power. But we use as much speed that we need to get the job done. Same with power. Okay? You don't you, you don't have to hit somebody 1,000% of the time. It doesn't take a sledgehammer to pound in a thumbtack, right? And I don't need to pull out of my driveway at 90 miles per hour. I'll get the job done by doing it properly. Okay? Um, okay, I think, I thought I had one more thing I wanted to tell you guys, but, um, um, I think that's probably my five minutes, if not, maybe a little over. So with that being said, I'll keep it at that. Back to you, Dan. All right, my man, thank you very much. <clears throat> I agree. I'm a big fan of timing over speed as well. I think it's terrific. So a couple of things I want to talk about before we roll on to our next presenter. Number one, this is the Kempo Brotherhood Roundtable. So I want to talk to you a minute about the members only page that we have. If you would like to become a member of the Brotherhood, now understand you become a member of the Brotherhood. We don't, we really don't have any expectations of you. You know what I mean? If you would like to come train with one of us and have one of us as your instructor, great. We're not looking to be your instructor. You can keep your instructor. You, you can be a member of 35 different organizations. We don't care. We just like to give you an opportunity to see what we're sharing. And it's an opportunity for you to share as well in the last month. Okay. So last month ago, I messed up. You guys know I messed up. I forgot to hit record. Last we week is gone forever. I messed that one up. I know, I know, I know. But what happened was on the members only page for the next couple of weeks, we had the different instructors jumping on there and they shared their take on Taming the Mace once again, add a little extra stuff. And then we had a couple of the members come on and share their stuff, which is always welcome. So 50 bucks a month or 50 bucks a month. Ooh, that'd be great. 50 bucks a year. Okay, is what it costs for the uh, Brotherhood membership. You're going to get a membership packet and a patch and a sweet ID card laminated, right? But you're also going to get access to the members only page, and that's where you're going to get to see all that stuff uh, and share if you'd like. And also, uh, this forum is a forum that we've been doing a lot of. And if you're enjoying this, next weekend, Kempo International is doing the Boston Virtual Camp. So we're all talking about how we wish we could hit everybody. We wish we could do that. We're making the most of what we can, and so is Campo International. So next week, uh, that's uh, October 17th and October 18th, they're doing the Boston Virtual Camp. So if you're interested in that, you can go to CampoInternational.org, okay? We have a lot of good – we, they have a lot of good instructors there, some Brotherhood members, you know, John Ward, rock and roll, my man John Ward, awesome guy. Angelo's going to be there, you know. Uh, you got Norman Sandler, you got Doreen Durienzo, you got Gilbert Velez, you got Luis Gutierrez, you have, uh, who am I missing? John Busto, Andy Seatherton. All right. A lot of good guys. A lot of good instructors. Don't tell Mrs. C. I said a lot of good guys. She's awesome too. All right. So <laughs> check it out next week. All right. Rolling right along. We're going to throw it to my man, Brian Stahl. What's up, everybody? It's awesome to be back with everyone, seeing everyone again. Uh, I love these monthly things and, you know, great job to all the instructors that have gone so far. A lot of great material. You guys get my mind spinning with all of these awesome ideas. So 
I'm going to give you my two cents. Um, and if you're not already a member, come and join us. It's a lot of fun. We have a blast. All right. Uh, we've already established backbreaker. Uh, the, the attack on this is your flank right punch. Um, and I'm just going to give you, you know, a lot of what I was going to say was, has already been covered, but I'll give you my flavor on this. So you have your flank attack, right? Um, as that right punch comes in, you have your double parry inward, outward. You know, the, that rule of, you know, uh, always block above the elbow on the outside. You know, I see some people trying to reach with that with that double factor to try and get above the elbow. Don't worry about that. You got a flank attack coming. Just, just don't get hit. Let the second block get above the elbow. Okay, that's what it's there for. Here. Um, now, right along here, we have something that I, I like to refer to as a rolling body check. Um, and you want to think about how to eliminate the gap of space between you and your opponent. So when you do these, don't create a big distance between you and them as you're rolling behind. You got to keep this tight. Keep this tight. You're checking them out all the way through. So at the end of the day, when you land in your position, I'm going to turn this way. You're, it's already been said. You shouldn't be out here. They have too much wiggle room. All right. We learned that in other techniques, wherever you're throwing somebody, all right, you got to have them in close. Just like if you're picking something up heavy, you don't pick it up like this, right? You, you pick it up and it's close to your body. You see that in techniques like uh, blanking on the name, taming the mace, boom. You don't throw them this way, right? You bring them in close and then you launch them into the wall. You see that all over the place. So when you do this, keep it tight, don't overextend. Uh, as you work your way behind, and I'm going to face you here. Um, again, don't go into a forward bow. I don't like a forward bow here. All right. Um, you, you don't have as much lateral stability. I go wide kneel here. All right. Again, nice, um, uh, nice secure grip. We've all talked about locking it in, marriage it to gravity. It's already been mentioned. Your what if to this is uh, you get here, they, you don't have a secure grip. They break out. You miss the grab, whatever, and then you have kneel of compulsion. Doesn't have to be in the old compulsion. You got a whole library to choose from of all sorts of stuff that you want to do. Um, it, you know, instead of doing the old compulsion, you could do the extension to what's this one? Shield and mace, right? You got to, you know, step back and kick. You could do that just the same. There's so much you can play with in this technique. You also could do a kick, come around, hit here and go and do the extension to, uh, retreating pendulum. These things have to bubble to the surface sometimes. So there's a lot you can do with this. Um, if you want to, you know, so you can tempo, tempo, uh, tempo it up with these different extensions, but you could also take it and play around with some of your boxing ideas. And I love, I love what Gail is doing coming underneath. I was feeling bad for you, Mark. I was like, man, his hips are just healing up and bam. It's like, man, that's a, that's a rough one right there, but I'm glad to see you're doing well, my friend. Uh, but if you were to boxify this one up too, um, if you have someone you're squaring off against, obviously you're, you're, you're in your right neutral bow. Uh, if they have their left foot forward, for those of you who haven't trained with Trejo, he used to do all of these drills and almost all of them would start with jab and fade or fade and jab. Same thing here. If you squaring off with someone, they shoot a, let's say their uh, left foot's forward and they shoot a uh, jab cross, you could fade the jab and then work to the outside of the right, all right? If their right foot's forward, you could fade the jab just the same and then still try and work on the outside. You can slip underneath just like Gail was doing. So you can boxify this all you want too. Um, so you have a lot of options here. So let's go back. I kind of went on a tangent there. So you took your... We took this here, right? We kept it tight. We work our way around. Now, Mike just talked a little bit about this too. When you do this knee, when you do this knee, right? Don't pull the hands all the way to the hips. I appreciate the enthusiasm for depth penetration, but if you're pulling your hands all the way to your hips, when you shoot this knee, your knee is going to be protruding about two feet outside of their chest, okay? So you're going to get all the depth penetration that you need if those elbows um, – if you lock those elbows in for this knee before you drop them down. Now, once you have them here, I like to look at patterns and techniques. I don't know what time I started. I'm looking at my clock. I hope I'm not going on here. But um, this, it's parting wings, it's parting wings. So I always like to think if I'm going to go grab to do this break, I might as well make 
make it a strike on the way to the grab, all right? So you're here, kind of looks similar to here, right? You're just down low. We're gonna go in and we're gonna reach. We're gonna reach for that chin, grab. That's just like parting wings right here. Boom. You're gonna snap as you brace here. You're gonna come back and you chop. All right, we already, so everyone covered this. I do the eye gouge this way, right? And then we loop and I do our double back knuckles and we drop back with the palm heel claw on the heel and stomp. So this stuff, I love these pattern similarities with all of our techniques. How many techniques do we have where you kind of work this circle? I mean, you got hooking wings, right? Uh, it, you know, you can, uh, you got marriage of the rams. You got, if you want to do it on one side and reverse the circle, you got this one, right? You got, uh, 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 uh. I'm blanking out someone. Well, you know this one that I can't remember the name off the top of my Obscure head. Claws. Obscure claws. Thank you. Thank you. Obscure claws. Thanks for the, uh, for the assist there, Danny. <laughs> you got obscure claws. Um, so these patterns are all over the place. So if you look at backbreaker, a lot of this is not new. It's just taking pieces of your different techniques and orienting them, orienting them in different ways. Um, yeah, we talked about this. So, yeah, that's all I was going to go into with this one. I'm probably over on my five minutes, but it's awesome to see everybody. Great job out there, and let's keep it going. Thank you very much, Mr. Saul. Thank you very much. All right. Now, if uh, I mean, you understand that this is a uh, tempo show, so we have a uh, – a lot of respect for everybody that presents on the show. So I'm not even talking about his tempo ability because I always love watching that. But really the reason why I love watching Steve Stewart is the entertainment factor. This guy has it. Mr. Stewart. Uh-oh. You have to turn your camera on. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Come on. What happened? It's coming. It's coming. Hang oh. on. Oh. There you go. Oh. Oh, this Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> That's because Brian went over. Brian went over. Yeah, Brian, it's called Obscure Claws. It's Obscure Claws, Brian. Hey, don't right. deflect, right. Steve. Right. Don't deflect. Steve Stewart. <laughs> and Tony. Hey, how's it going? Oh. Anyway, thank you for having us. It's lovely to be here. We're in COVID land, phase two in Toronto. We're still in phase three here, but who knows? Anyway, I hope everybody's safe. Mahama Taba Tabaya, yes. I haven't seen you again five years ago, or maybe four. It's four Canadian, five US. Anyway, it's $50 a month Canadian to belong, which is $50 a year US to belong. There you go. Anyway, here we go. Uh, Glancing wing, right? Oh, backbreaker. Okay. So I call it a couple of different things with the backbreaker. And the punch comes in this way here. I want to keep tight to him. I don't want to be way out here because it allows him maybe to kick me, right? Or to swing around at me. So even from this side here, just to the right, I want to I want to move the energy that way. So it's pulling. And I want to get as move this way as close behind him as I can. When I get behind them, there's two points in your traditional Chinese medicine points called, uh, they're specialty alarm points, uh, um, extraordinary points 14, which actually work the whole endocrine system, which is your hormonal system. So when I come behind here, bang, I like to hit those before I grab because it shoots it right down the spine to the coccyx. Yes, indeed, so it's easier then to penetrate. So from this is on this flank here, when I move this way, I want to stay tight to him, hit that, and then grab. Now, I like to go to the periformis, which is the sex muscle. So there won't be any sex going on with him. So if you get his girlfriend, you're okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Over this angle here. So again, paying attention here as he comes in this way. Boom. Moving this way, hit that, shoot that. But keep tight. Don't be way back here. In here. Now, I want to drop that forward ball and drop him. So he's sitting right there like a baby. Now I tap here and here at the same time. Boom. Opposite sides. As I pivot, drop down to the bridge of the nose. Now, as Mike Miller said about the back knuckle or the heel, I have to do both. 
a de la beat. So I hit this on the clavicle. The clavicle will fracture at 20 pounds pressure, Canadian, and that's about 10 US. Uh, uh, uh. So when I hit that, after the bridge and all, I roll that, then I drop. So it's one, two. But eight to fifth. then I'm right here to really finish that clavicle in case I didn't get it right. You're using your body weight. So I weigh about 175. I'm 6'4", trapped in a 5.9 body, but that's okay. So I want to land on that. Now, coming back up, if, if for some reason he does a hook and I want to duck underneath, so he does a hook, I duck underneath, this is called breaking balls. <laughs> right. It's the take on backbreaker by breaking balls. I'm okay. I'm okay. So again, <laughs> No cup. <laughs> Missed it by that much. So again, with the hook, if I move this way, hit breaking balls, now I can slide back. I still have them. I can just drop on here, just leave out the knee. Don't have to use the knee. And everything else remains the same. So you just delete something. Now, Yeah, I missed that. Could you do that again? One, two, this motion. I can still do the same thing. I can tap the leg, boom, hit this, then I go right into it. So I can add an insert into that move, and everything else is the same. Now, if you keep in mind, the piriformis muscle is right in the center of the gluteus maximus. It's called GB30. You hit that one, I'm going to tell you, there's no sex going on. That's what she said. So it's ruining my weekend. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> I'll show you the other now, if we, keeping in mind when he's resting on you this way, keeping it in tight, you're in a forward bow resting on you this way, I like to hit the opposite quadrant at the same time, all right? Because the corpus callosum divides right and left hemisphere. So this side works that side, that side works that side. When I'm hitting these two points here, it affects the autonomic nervous system, which is sympathetic, parasympathetic. Sympathetic regulates your heart rate, and your respiration. Parasympathetic reg regulates digestion, defecation, and urination. And the reason why you come back in case he has a defecation. <laughs> so that's my take on that. Now, if we do the COVID distance maneuver of backbreaker, it kind of works this way here. From here, boom, boom, bang, boom, bang. I cross it, boom, bang this way, bang this way, boom, and then, and then you finish. Steve, are you okay? I take on backbreaker. <laughs> Big ups to Tony V. Good to see you, my man, Steve Stewart. Always entertaining. All right, we're going to send it over to Dartmouth. One of my favorite schools out there. All the people there in Dartmouth are wonderful. As soon as he unmutes his mic, Mr. No, no, I was going to say, you okay? Mr. Dan Donfro, if you could unmute your mic. There we go, Dan Donfro. All right. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry about the mic. Uh, I forgot about that. But, yeah, thanks uh, Thanks for having us again. Here we are in Dartmouth, Massachusetts. So the backbreaker. So... A lot of stuff was covered on, you know, um, issues with height. I don't necessarily have that problem. Uh, but first, let me show you the uh, the way that I learned the technique, the base version. I'll just do it in the air first. So well, I'll go this way. So the normal penalties that everybody's doing, slipping around behind. And at the knee, I go to the coccyx and then drop them down, spine on the knee. I like to box the ears with two hands. Then I go for the grab and the chop, double eye into the back knuckle and like uh, – Mr. Miller was saying, I like to throw the claws to help the guy down, and then I like to buckle back on the collarbone or the side of the neck. So on the body, the base version, here, get behind, knee, drop, up here, snap, chop, hook, and then help him down and buckle back. So now my issue with this one, and again, it's not an issue. If you love the technique, you can make anything work. But... In a fist fight, I find it very difficult to get myself back here. All right, if it was that easy, you'd win every single fight. So, 
punch comes in, what I want to do is give you a few inserts to help me. So here we are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the back of the leg and then into the ribs. So again, those moves, I'm here, right in here. Now I can slip in behind and do my backbreaker. So again, I'll do it a little slow. Let's make the, uh, a little closer here. All right, so the punch comes here, hit. And again, Mr. Miller had brought up, uh, what was it, shield and mace? So it's basically, it looks a little bit like shield and mace. I'm just gonna reverse the motion here. And then, what would it be like, circling the storm or even like flashing wings? And it puts me in a nice position. I can even come around with an extra hit. But it's a nice position to slip right in. So how would it go? To here. Boom. There it is. Let's change the angle. So punch comes in. Pow. And in we are. And there it is. So a couple little useful inserts. Again, in the air to be one, two, three. So parry the punch back of the leg into the ribs. Puts me right into position. So that's what I got for the backbreaker. Send it back over to you, Dan. All right. So some of you are going to get this and some of you aren't, but I'm sitting here watching Don Fro do his technique, and he goes one, two, three, and then I know he's coming back into here, and for some reason I'm thinking – God, there's a back knuckle there, and I'm trying to figure out what technique does the back knuckle, and the only thing I can come up with is what? The California jump switch. <laughs> so uh, if you've ever taken a class with uh, Angelo or Angelo's instructor, Yosh, then you know the California jump switch. All right, so. My take on backbreaker. So I was thinking about it, you know, I mean, it's backbreaker. We've all done it a million times, okay? We probably all had the same reaction the first time we heard that name, like, yep, I got to learn that one. The backbreaker, right? So we've all broken it down a million times, which is kind of the motivation for why we did this today. But uh, I wanted to talk about uh, a different kind of approach if any of you have ever sparred before, right, or been in a real street altercation, I mean, sometimes one of the toughest things to do is close the distance, right? You square off against somebody, you're sparring, and they pop, 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 they shoot the jet, pop, bang, you know, whatever, you know, or you're, you're, I remember I was in like, I don't know, fifth grade, I've been doing karate for less than a year, I got into a fight, me against one of the kids up in North Philly, and, uh, my karate didn't work because this kid just went bang and took off. And that was it. I didn't really know what was coming off. But sometimes the dude's kind of squaring off you back a little bit. So you got to close the distance. Now, you have a couple of people. We're going to leave that alone. I'm going to come back to that in a sec. You'll see. Now, you have a couple of people that will focus on things like this. Let's say we have delayed sword, right? Delayed sword is a front hand block, a kick, and then a front hand strike. Right? And then what do we do? We make it a little more advanced. We have a front hand block, we have a back hand block, and we have a front hand strike and reversing mace. Michael Miller referenced these a little bit, right? So you have inward block, front hand strike. Then you have inward parry, outward parry, front hand strike. So you make it a little more advanced. Then you go to backbreaker and what changes? In reversing mace and delayed sword, your block is with the front hand, right? So you have a front hand inward and then a back hand outward and strike. We get to re or back breaker and we go back hand inward, front hand outward, okay? Then we also have uh, destructive fans. Destructive fans, is that man? I can't remember. Five, form five, first technique in form five, destructive fans. Now we have backhand outward, front hand inward, backhand strike. So you have the opposite of reversing mace, but you have the foot positioning of backbreaker. All right, so you're breaking it down a little more. If you take it a little further, you can go with uh, 
circling fans. What circling fans? You have two inwards, but they're both in front. Okay, they're both in front. Then you have snaking talon, which is the inward and the outward, but they're handled with just the front hand. All right, so we have all these different scenarios. Now, what does this have to do with the price of tea in China? This helps you understand these entries, okay? Because my reaction speed is gonna be pretty quick. It's not as quick as action speed, but my reaction speed is gonna be pretty quick. So when I train this stuff and I break this down, your people poo-poo, oh, all that guy does is he worries about fighting, he doesn't worry about the technical aspect, or oh, all that guy does is he worries about the technical aspect, he doesn't worry about the fighting aspect, okay? But if you have it all encompassing, these really do work well together, okay? So, I'm not necessarily sure how to enter the guy, but if I'm training my mind front hand, back hand, front hand, back hand, front hand, front hand, back hand, front hand, back hand, two of them together, all that kind of stuff, it trains you to prepare for all of these different entries. That's why it's important to look at these techniques. That's why I said what I said about Lorenzo with him tying these into the forms, which he did with the insert with long two. Lorenzo's always good with that stuff, man. But anyway, if you train these and you understand these, when the time comes to react, you can close the distance in, out, whatever you need to do properly because you've trained all these options, you've talked about them, you've practiced them, and now they're part of your brain. And then the last thing I want to talk about is sometimes you just have to have the vision to see the entries. So uh, a few of the guys uh, did the slip, right? So dude swings wild and you do the slip. And then you can come in, uh, you know, here, whatever, you slip on the backbreaker. This is my take on this. So for this, I'm going to call my son Michael in, okay? Now, Michael, you're going to stand right here. Now, for the first one, Michael, you're going to give me a straight right step through punch, just like this, okay? And now here we go. Backbreaker. We have the, the, the backhand inward along with the front hand outward, and then we roll through and grab And I'm not even worried about the rest of the technique. If you're able to close the distance with that, if you're able to set it up, like I like what Brian said, of course I'm gonna like what Brian said, but anyway, I like what Brian said, which is maybe you could feed the jab, the jab comes back, that's an old Trejo entry, and then you can go in. Trejo used to do that with uh, snapping twigs. You know, whoop, pop, and then whoop, and then drop back, bang, that was one of the Trejo favorites. But every now and again, you might just get lucky. All right, every now and again, you might just get lucky, but it takes this vision and understanding to know to take advantage of the entry. And here's what I'm talking about. Let's say I have Michael here. He's going to throw a big, wild, crazy haymaker, right? And I'm not quite ready for it. He shoots this big one. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Oh, hey, look. Backbreaker. You see that? Sometimes the opportunity just presents itself but you have to have the vision to see it and grab it and go with it. So that's my take on Backbreaker. Who do we have next? Up next, oh, here we go. Sweet. All right, so we have our final two presenters of the day, our guests, the guys that we asked to be here. And what can I say about Larry Kangaika except for this? The first time he was on the show was like maybe three or four shows ago. All right, it was the very first time I'd ever seen this gentleman do anything ever. And as soon as he was done, I was like, we gotta get this guy back. We gotta get this guy. I wanna see more of that. So I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna throw it over to my new pal, Mr. Larry Kingaika. Hey, how's it, everybody? Just wanted to check in. Thank you, Brotherhood. It's always a pleasure to be with you guys. I learned so much from you guys. Okay, so here's all my notes that I took. I learned to take notes from uh, Mr. Mech. So all you guys had great things, a lot of good stuff. Um, backbreaker. What can you say about the backbreaker? It is a staple technique for American Kempo, just like five swords and everything else. But uh, as, as I was going through it, everything that I wanted to share was already kind of taken. It, it's, it's funny how that ends up working. So Mr. Tabata, you're going to have to create a whole new backbreaker for Kempo. So, I'm going to talk about obscure wing. Obscure wings. I like that. Okay. So anyway, basically, I'm using my wife. I have the opposite uh, problem that, you know, Angelo Collado and everyone else has. I have to work with shorter people. So I have to adjust my tempo to, to shorter people. So this 
This is actually going to refer to shorter, uh, taller Kempo people and the shorter Kempo people. Actually, honestly, the concepts and the principles. The principles, if they work, if you work on the principles of the techniques, it actually creates the opportunity for you guys to, to do the technique correctly, no matter height level. You may have to just adjust uh, targeting and timing. Um, all that comes with the equation formula, the 21 concepts of principles of every single technique. So let's just get going with the backbreaker. Basic technique is uh, right straight punch. You do your double parry. I, Mr. Uh, uh, sorry, guys, I'm horrible with names. Dionfro. Mr. Dionfro already went through this part where he hits the leg and does the elbow. I like doing the same thing where I'll actually strike the kidney. So I do my double parry, strike the kidney, and then I'll, I'll do an inward elbow, and then I'll do another back shot to that other kidney. And then I turn around and then I grab. You can only hit the person so many times, but I like to hit. That's just my thing. I like to hit as many times as I possibly can. If I get, if I do 20 strikes and I get four good solid strikes in, I'm good. I'm happy. As long as the person is not standing, I'm happy. The idea, the key thing is what Mr. Uh, Mr. Mech said. You have to have the vision and the understanding of the entry. I like that. So that's very important. Because if you don't get that and you don't understand how the principles are being able to get away from that punch, whether it's a straight punch or a roundhouse punch, you may have to go underneath, bob and weave, step with the right or the left, parry with the left, parry with the right, right first, left first, whatever the case may be. I think the idea, really, if I can share anything, it's, it's really just getting the reps in. Do the reps over and over and over on different people, different sizes. Then you start creating this technique. Know the ideal phase. Mr. Parker gave us the ideal phase as a foundation. Once we get the foundation, we can build on that. We can work with the different height levels. We can work with, uh, you know, someone that's shorter to taller, taller to shorter, whatever the case may be. And once you get the foundation or the ideal phase, then you can start doing the equation formula, insert, adjust, alter, regular. All that has to do with timing. Timing is very important. Timing is huge. Timing gives you power, speed. Speed gives you a lot of power. But don't compensate your speed for your accuracy like, uh, like everyone else is saying on this video. So what I like to do is I like to just set Catch that parry, and then you can catch the outward elbow here. So, if, and if you do this correctly, you can hyper possible hyper strike. Oh, sorry, elbow strike, grab, hold. Here's that body wings that was brought up earlier. Rip, chop, back knuckle, heel palm, and I like to pause. I step in reverse. Then you have the extensions, which is again, extensions are no more than ideal phase. But this motion is nothing more than. Um, the opposite and reverse of one of the techniques that we do anyway. The sequential flow of the technique. So just know the sequential flow of the technique. Um, one other thing is someone brought up, I think it was uh, Noor. Monster Noor is the launching or turning and then being able to stomp. Man, once you do that, we get this catapulting launching where you're able to just turn. And we do that on our strikes. But once you get that on your strike, or you get them, and you're able to launch off the ground, man, you can get that launch. Same concept on the guy's heel. And it doesn't take a lot. I'm 240 pounds. It only takes a, 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 just, just basically dropping your weight. But man, you get that knee going to ricochet. Man, that gets your body right off that. And so basically, I'm taking, what I'm learning is how to hit correctly. I'm taking that in the opposite and how to strike down on the bottom. So anyway, just something fun to have. You guys enjoy it. I love all you guys. Mr. Mac, Mr. Chan, Saul, Mr. Nuars, you guys are great. I love being with you guys. I love watching you guys. Mr. Hildebrand's my brother. Always great to see you guys. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you guys for everything. And we love you right back, my man. Excellent, just like last time. Thank you very much. Man, it's so much fun when I find somebody new to me. I mean, it's clearly been around doing Kempo for a really long time, but new to me. To see another guy do such excellent Kempo, it's true. I, man, I, I'm, all, I'm just a fan. So anyway, our final presenter of the day 
First of all, he's from West LA, not West Hollywood. Not going to make that mistake again. But this is what I want to talk about before we bring him on. You guys know, and if you don't know, I'm going to say it anyway. And if you do know, it's just fun to talk about. You know that, like, now legendary demo from the internationals, right? You got Frank Trejo in there, and you got Diane Tanaka in there. Muhammad Tabi Tabai was one of the guys in there. That's some Kempo history. I don't know if you knew that at the time, but it's some big-time Kempo history now. And I know a lot of people that have tried to emulate that demo, including me, and I even did it with my kids' demo team. So we got that guy here right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Muhammad Tabi Tabai. Hello, everyone. Hope all you guys are doing uh, well. Um, I was going to say something. You know, I've been trying to join the Brotherhood, but every time I call, you know, Sibora is not answering me. I send email. He's ignoring me. That's, that's, that's what's happening. I'm telling you. But, uh, he does it to all of us. <laughs> uh, anyway, so let's talk about dominating circles. Okay, we're going to talk about backbreaker. Uh, this this technique is a uh, amazing technique, and you guys went over a, a whole bunch of uh, good points. Uh, there are a couple of things that uh, I want to uh, uh, talk to you about, and then some of the different approaches. So uh, let me uh, use my uh, beautiful daughter Natasha. Come up. Okay. Um, one of the things that the, the, the reason is called the, let me see, backbreaker, okay, is when, when you shoot the knee to the midsection, pushing the hip forward, and then you pull the upper body down, and it doesn't take much. There's a lot of pressure that's going to go on the spine, okay? So, uh, again, it, the, that, that's why you need to stay real close. So we shoot the knee, push the hip forward, and right away we're pushing the upper body down and it puts the uh, pressure on the uh, midsection, on the spine. Now, when we do the, uh, uh, we do the punch, you got to make sure that once you do your double parry, okay, moving out of the way, you need to have a nice, strong stance. And your base has to be very strong because... If there is any body weight coming at you, you got to be able to deal with it or at least survive, okay? So, uh, so we do the uh, double parry, and as soon as you do the double parry and get out of the way, you want that right hand rolling right into your opponent, checking, okay? So once we do that, and then you're going to get around the person, I'll turn this way. Again, a lot of people, uh, some of you guys mentioned this. You need to stay real close, okay? You always want to stay close, especially if you're going to do a knee shot and it's a short range, okay? So you got to be, you got to be right here. And go ahead and drop your head down a little bit, okay? So you're not standing behind them like this in case they shoot, then you're going to get hit to the, to the face. So once you get around right here, this is where I feel safe, being right here close, okay? So now, again... Uh, if we're dealing with the punch, okay, so we do this, now you get around and you're close and you shoot the knee to the tailbone. Once you shoot the knee to the tailbone, okay, and you bring down, okay, you, want them, you don't want them falling on you. So you, I don't want to pull this person into me. I want to force them right to the ground. So even if they're not, they're not going to fall on my knee and they're going to hit the ground, that's even better. So, when you do this, and then you bring him down, okay, and you're working your snap and chop in the back fist or a hammer fist, whatever, okay, when you want to pull away and you're working your claws, you got to make sure that you're taking them to the ground. You don't want them to fall on their own. They're going to do that anyways, but you're actually thinking about your mindset is, I want to smash the back of his head to the ground. So if they're falling and the body weight is going, but you want to help that, and it's got to happen right here. You don't want to create a whole bunch of distance. So when you work the uh, knee strike and you bring them down, you work your snap and all that good stuff, smash the back of the head to the ground <clears throat> right there, right in front of you, okay? So that's the backbreaker. Now, I want to show you a couple of different approaches also. And uh, 
couple of you guys mentioned that that after after we do this, okay, you could also work the uh, elbow strike right here with, with the stepping forward, and then just go into your flashing wings. Okay, that's a beautiful move right there. So we work the double parry. Okay, either I roll in, okay, to keep their body weight away, or try and keep it away, or once I do this, if they're close enough, when when we shoot the elbow in and then go back and then so on, work your flashing flashing wings. One of the other approaches that I like to do is if I'm staying to this this close to the person and I could jump their throat, that's probably uh, be a priority for me. That if I if I'm here, okay, and I could just go into just going into the uh, choke hole, okay, and control them this way, okay. I, I feel safe being this close, okay, working the choke hole. So as soon as we do the, did you see that move? That was an advanced move, okay. So we work the double parry, okay, and if I'm close, I jump it right there, okay. Three naked choke, and you guys know that, okay. Another approach that I like to use also is if I happen to get behind this person, okay, there's always a double leg takedown. We do a lot of double leg takedown facing the opponent, and then you could do the double leg takedown just a little bit here, okay? So if I'm behind here, okay, I can shoot for the legs, okay? You just got to make sure if your lead leg is between the legs, okay, and you got your left leg up front, then your head is going to go to the right side. I mean, it just feels comfortable that way. It just makes sense. So you're behind the person, and you could just drop straight down, okay, for the double leg takedown and push him forward. Once you do the takedown, then you could either go to the ground with them, or you could, let's say, jump on their back like a leap of death. So these are the uh, different approaches that you could do to uh, backbreaker. Again, your initial step that you do, okay, you got you to gotta make sure your base is very strong. Because I've seen sometimes people try and kind of like uh, twist off of this. Okay, anytime you start twisting, okay, then if there is any body weight coming at you, things are going to get more difficult. So you just want to make sure you got that strong base and continue to have that strong base as you get around it. Okay. So uh, that's all I got to say about the, thank you, Natasha, uh, about the backbreaker. Now, if there's any comments or uh, questions, I'll be more than happy to hear it and listen. I have one. Yes, I'm who's that? Big, sorry about that. Um, you could also go into um, the sleeper from there too. And do a, yeah, from the triangle choke. Sure you can. Move, you could go underneath, hook under, and go from there. Sure, I'd like to see your version of it. Film it, put it on YouTube so the rest of us could watch. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. Man, that elbow, ah, that was beautiful right there. I love that. Absolutely yeah. excellent as always. All right, so if I can ask all of the uh, presenters today to please unmute. If you could please unmute. We have a little something, something you guys know we like to do at the end called pass the mic. So... All of our presenters today are going to give a quick 30-second wrap-up. Angelo, unmute your mic. <laughs> Yo. All right. Number one is Angelo, 30 all right, seconds. Guys, go. today was cool, man. I love seeing all these different variations of backbreaker. I learned a lot of new little tricks. Um, awesome stuff. Uh, Mr. Kangaika, Mr. Mohammed, thank you very much thank for you. joining us. You're always awesome to watch and always learn from you guys, man. Look up to all you guys. So thank you very much. 
Awesome stuff, guys. Always love the, the little inserts. I really like that elbow that a few of you guys touched on. <coughs> after, boom, dropping that up down. Awesome. A um, couple things that uh, maybe put a video up on the Brotherhood page tomorrow. Share my notes a little bit as well. We'll have some fun. Okay. But I love it. Good love stuff, it. guys. Thank you. And all you members out there, keep doing what you do. Keep checking our pages. And uh, let's, let's keep growing and doing what we do, guys. Love you. All right, thank you very much, uh, the Collados. Let's throw it over to Lorenzo. Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you so much, Mr. Congaita, and uh, Mr. Talatala. It's a pleasure to uh, to see to work, and it's a pleasure that you can share your knowledge with us. And uh, we are ready for the next time. Hope that all people go go okay with the virus, please. Safe. And we continue as uh, so all the time for the next party. Non-stop. See you later. Ciao. All right. Thank you very much. We're going to throw it over to Monte. Thank you very much. It's a great honor. Like I always said, it's a great mind alliance. We have a bunch of instructors sharing their knowledge with everybody. Please join us. It doesn't cost a lot of money, and it's, uh, the rewards are unbelievable. It's a great family of Kempo joining together. Thank you so much for the guests. I appreciate your knowledge. I appreciate your efforts and uh, spending time with us. Greetings. Thank you, Monty. Throwing it over to Michael Miller. Good job today, guys, as always. You know, I, I think every time we do this, it gets better, man. I mean, this was great. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Kungaika and, and Mr. Tabatabai for uh, being a part of this again, guys. Appreciate you guys greatly and you guys did awesome it's not easy to go last <laughs> you know I, I had to go in the middle and I was like oh boy this is going to be interesting um but you guys did just phenomenal and the last thing I want to say is it's always good to see my good friend uh, John Bon Jovi I mean Steve Stewart it's great to see you Steve <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you Mr. Miller throwing it over to so. <laughs> Fantastic day, my friends. Fantastic day, my friends. Great job to all the instructors out there. Great material. Mr. Tabatabai, Mr. Kangaika, awesome. And, and Mr. Kangaika, if you could do me a favor and take like a picture of your notes, both sides, and send them to me, you are better prepared than I was. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Fantastic job today. Keep it up. Stay safe out there. And if you're not a member, Come and join us. It's a blast. Thank you, Brian. Steve Stewart. Hang on. I'll get him. This is John Bon Jovi. Let me get him. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> I just want to say to the special guest, outstanding job. I don't know the first gentleman at all, but I, I know his name. I know his reputation, but I know I do know Muhammad Tabat Tabaya. Great to see you out there again, sir. As always, to, you, to all the other Brotherhood guys, and you guys, I'm just honored to be on the mat with all of you guys up here in Canada in COVID times. So, um, is it worth it? Absolutely. For fifty dollars Canadian a month, or fifty dollars US a year, you can belong to the Brotherhood. <laughs> so, come on and join us. Stay tuned, and thank you, everybody, for having me on. It's an honor. $50 a year, not a month. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, that's Canadian math. <laughs> Once again, great session. I'm honored to be a presenter along with the other brothers. And uh, The information on this one was phenomenal. I want to thank the uh, special guest, Master Tabat Dubai, Mr. Kangaika. Great to see you guys again, and uh, wonderful stuff. And I'd like to thank my Uki, Mr. Brightman, and all the other Ukis out there that were taking a beating today. You guys really make it happen. <laughs> all right, and then uh, it's my turn. So here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to double down a little bit on what I said earlier. So 
We've been doing this. This is, I believe, the 16th show now. 16th show, I think, right? Definitely. And uh, early on, we're sitting here. We're like, man, we got to get this thing off the uh, off the ground and see if anyone's going to be paying attention to this. And let me tell you something. It's been spectacular, the response. Oh, man, I can't tell you how awesome this is. But early on, we put the call out there. We put the call out there for people to do it. And Muhammad Tabatabai didn't shudder. He did nothing. He didn't ask any questions. He just said, yep, I'll do it. And I think it was the third, second or third show you were on, man. So I want to thank you for having our back. I really appreciate that. And as a side note, we had another, I'm going to be vague about this, high-ranking Kempo practitioner who said no the same week because <laughs> of injuries until he found out Muhammad Tabatabai was on, and then he wanted on and his injuries were healed up. That person hasn't been on the show yet. <laughs> but anyway, Mama <laughs> Top Dubai, you're the man. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, now we will throw it over to Mr. Kingaiko. Hey, everyone. Thank you for everything. I love the brotherhood. I love the camaraderie. I love the feeling and what you guys actually have to share. I don't, I don't honestly get the feeling that there's any attitudes or any issues. or any, it's, it's seriously one of the best things I've seen in Kempo in a very, very long time. And I was in the Kempo family, like literally married to <laughs> I saw a lot of politics. I saw a lot of stuff going go south. So, Mr. Mm. Tabatabai, always a pleasure to see you, sir. Right. Looking good, looking great. I need hair. I need, I need some white hair like my brother. <laughs> you see me and I'm there. So, love you guys. Keep it up, man. All right, thank you very much. We are welcoming to everybody out there except for Dallas Cowboy fan. Oh, wait, that's just me. All right, Muhammad Tabatabai. <laughs> well, it was uh, great again to be with you guys. Uh, every now and then, uh, you know, I get on the phone and talk to Sibora. We have a good time. Um, amazing group of guys, and you guys just got good energy going. So uh, it's always a pleasure to be part of this show. Thank you Thank very you, much. We're going to throw it Thank over you. to you. Thank well, you, sir. Hold on, Mr. Mark Lawler. Yeah, hey, you guys. Uh, we're all looking forward to the time we can do this in person. And uh, hopefully, you know, next year is going to bring that about. Uh, but this is always a pleasure. Uh, Gail and I want to thank everybody. Uh, Muhammad, top of Dubai, very good being with you. Larry Kangaika, hope to meet you guys in person sometime. Great being with you. Thank you, Mr. Lawler. And then finally, not finally, last but not least, Sibora. Hey, everybody. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Mr. Mohammed and uh, uh, Mr. Kangaika, so awesome to have you guys back. Great stuff from, uh, you know, from you and everybody. Um, I love seeing what we're doing. You know, it's just, it just awesome. This is a great way for um, all of our Kenpo people to, uh, to get uh, together. Um, so, uh, next month we'll do another one. We'll announce the date as soon as, uh, we, uh, we figure it out. Um, you know, and, and, and that's it, you know, just keep doing what we're doing. Um, and somebody need to fact check Mr. Muhammad because I <laughs> picked up the call. <laughs> I do answer the text and did, he did, he did just say a little, a little while ago that he talked to me. So yeah, see, I do pick up my call. I'll just pick it on you. <laughs> I'm just going to give you a hard time. And, and every time he calls me, every time he calls me at like around 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, I still answer his call. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you doing? <laughs> that, that makes three my time. <laughs> um, also, guys, we are having these uh, hoodies and T-shirts back in stock in a couple of weeks. So um, check out the website soon and, um, and we should have it uh, for sale just in case those of you are interested in uh, look cool and stay warm for the uh, fall. Anyway, thanks again. Have a great weekend, everybody. Salute. Salute. All right, everybody. We'll see you later. Salute. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Salute. guys. Thank you, everybody. Take care, see you everyone. See next time. Ciao. Bye, Good, everybody. Take care. Ciao. Bye. Take care. Ciao. Thanks, guys. I got from Venezuela. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Let me see. Bye. 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 Bye.
Oh, John. Bye, everybody. <laughs> hey, Tom. Bye.